as we pointed out, there's a video link that we shared with everyone that you can see on the bottom right-hand corner. Um, we encourage you to check this out after the presentation, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. Cyrus will share some ways on how we're going to use that link to help promote R3 in the Council in 2019. So to get started, we want to thank you for taking time to join us today to talk about advancing R3 in 2019. This is our third annual kind of webinar. We use January as a way to kick off the presentations and our work for the coming year. Oftentimes, we take a few moments to reflect back and look at where we've come from and then move forward and talk about some exciting ways which you'll be able to connect with the council and our team in 2019 to continue to advance R3. So without further ado, we'll get started. As many of you know, if you become familiar with us, the council has been around for about 10 years now. Our purpose for just brief review is to ensure support for and active participation in hunting and the shooting sports for future generations. The Council's vision is an America where hunting and the shooting sports are an integral part of mainstream culture and where hunters and target shooters are widely recognized as premier conservation contributors. The Council's mission is to facilitate the promotion and growth of hunting and the shooting sports and the education of the public on the contributions that hunters and target shooters make towards wildlife conservation. If you've worked with us before, you know that we work on R3 as a purpose to accomplish its purpose, mission, and goal. And our team that works on those efforts is, includes John Frampton, our CEO and President, Cyrus Baird, our Programs Director, <clears throat> myself, Samantha Petter, Director of Business Development, and then our newly added, Kristen Black, the Manager of R3 Programs and Community Engagement. Now, you'll get to hear from each of us during this presentation on the different efforts in which we work with the Council on. So what we wanted to start doing was to start by talking about 2018. And 2018 was one of the strongest years for the council so far. Um, if you were with us in the last 18 months, you were there at the National R3 Symposium, and you know that of all the work we've done, we could not have accomplished the many different things without the work and effort of our partners. From uh, providing financial sponsorship for the national event to occur, to helping to execute projects like the future of hunting and fishing, through RBFS, the Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation, and the American Sport Fishing Foundation and Cabela's, or through the development of new marketing content, such as the Northwoods Collective video that you guys can have access to. We can't achieve or do what we do without the work of our partners, and this was truly the year of partnerships for the Council. Some of our highlights in which we accomplished with our National R3 Symposium, which I referred to, through that event, we kicked off a lot of efforts. Um, we're, we'll share some information with you on the National Implementation Work Group, which is developed to advance our three efforts at the national level further. But we also accomplished a few other research projects, like the Future of Hunting and Fishing Project, which provided a solid understanding of the changing cohorts and shifting participation rates, and what that means to conservation and our three efforts in the future. And finally, we continue to grow and expand our R3 community. And in fact, through the Association of Conservation Information, we were recognized for managing first place in the online community engagement category. So 2018 really was a banner year for our organizations, and thank you to those partners that stood beside us to help us accomplish those goals. Now to build on the success, we wanted to kind of give you a framework to think about where we are as a community. Because not only has the council grown in our capacity and our capability, but our actual community has grown too. We like to share these screenshots because it provides a great image of what's happened over time. And back in 2017, when we made this map, uh, which you can find on the council's website, um, it's under the R3 tab, you can find all the contact information for all the R3 coordinators across the country, as well as our national partners. But you can only see in this image maybe 10 to 12 R3 coordinators on staff. If we look today, though, what you'll see is a little bit of growth of curve. We have more than 35 to 37 states having R3 coordinators or R3 teams actively working on R3 efforts for their organization. Further, many of our national partners have stepped up and assigned R3 positions, dedicated positions working to address R3 from either the regional or national perspective. Without these partners sharing the brunt of the work to help communicate about R3 and develop those strategies, we could not get to where we are today. What you'll also find is that there's some other people going to be joining us here today, and this is one of our most visited website pages on our 
one of the most visited pages on our website. But we just wanted to hire and highlight that more people are hiring ARCA coordinators as we progress too. From Delta Waterfowl to uh, state level programs like Illinois to Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever and even Congressional Sportsman's Foundation. More and more people are stepping up to add our three positions to their entities, and we look forward to working with them on to in 2019 to continue to grow. And finally, we thought we couldn't miss the fact that our own team is growing too, and you saw that we had our list of contacts. Um, there's John, Cyrus, and myself who have been with the council for a little bit now, but we also added a new manager, a contract manager of the R3 community, Ms. Kristen Black, who you'll hear from in a moment. And then some of us have taken the recruitment, retention, reauthorization aspect to heart and actually added to their families too. So we've added another entity, um, Ms. Charlotte, there to the staff as well. So we're excited that our team has grown, that the R3 community has grown, and that 2018 positioned us in a way that 2019 can continue to capitalize and improve on R3 efforts. So Kristen, would you like to explain about how we're going to start advancing R3 in 2019 with R3 community? Of course. Thanks, Sam. So obviously we're all here because we want to advance R3 in the future. I'm going to talk a little bit about ways that we're doing that uh, from the council level. So I'll start with um, plans and summits. So as most of you know, we hosted the R3 symposium last May. Um, we continue to host and provide ed education at state R3 trainings. The USFWS recently released their Region 3 plan, um, which you can find on the R3 community. Um, and the, if you're looking for it, the picture to the right of this text on the slide um, is the cover photo for that plan. So if you're a more visual person, you can just look for that photo. Additionally, we do have eight states um, currently with state plans. And that is a big gain considering just a few years ago we had zero. Um, so this is awesome. There are more states joining every year, and we look forward to continue um, to influence those. We also have been doing some growing in the R3 community itself. So last year our goal was to hit 1,500 members by the time the R3 symposium rolled around. And we did that. Um, in May of 2018, we did hit 1,500 members, and we continued to grow from there. Um, as of today, we hit 1,900. So that is a considerable growth um, when you think about the size of our community and the number of people who are actually working on R3. Um, out of those, almost 92% are returning back to the R3 community and engaging with posts, like uh, liking posts, commenting on them, or clicking on the links to read more information. Our goals in 2019, um, we think that we'll hit about 2,000 members here in a couple of months. Um, but we don't really want to put a number on that because what really matters is that we're continuing to grow the network um, in a way that is beneficial to everybody involved. We want to keep providing that relevant content um, so that that would be the newsletters, the posts, um, these webinars, things like that. And we want to continue engaging members in discussion. So if you've been on the R3 community site recently, you've seen um, a lot of good discussion going on between industry, agency, and NGO partners. And so um, what, one of my goals as the engagement manager is to keep um, facilitating those. And if you have any ideas about um, how, what you would like to see or how you would like things done maybe a little bit differently, um, please feel free to contact me. My contact um, is at the beginning and end of this presentation. And I'm open to suggestions. One thing we added content-wise was our snapshot series. Um, so these are created to highlight um, new and novel programs in the R3 field. So 
for example, um, just in this slide, I, I highlighted the Wild Ohio Harvest community. Um, so that was a snapshot from last month. And then we've also talked about um, industry standpoints, like adding these end caps. Um, so these are some of the things that whether you're agency or NGO or industry, um, maybe you can adopt some of these practices, learn how these other organizations did it, and we can keep coming together as a cohesive team to advance R3. And if you're looking for the rest of those snapshots, I do have the link here at the bottom of the slide. We also added a segment called What Do You Think? Um, this is really a time where, and a place where people can come together. We pose challenging questions that may not have one right answer. Um, and we encourage everybody to discuss these. So in this slide, I have a screen cap of uh, what, the, what do you think that we have done so far. Um, and again, you can access those through the R3 community just by typing in the search bar what do you think, or WDYT. So whenever you see that WDYT, um, you know that that's, that's the what do you think. And that's going to be engaging people in some good conversation with some um, potentially contentious topics. I also want to point out that we are uh, moving toward a webinar schedule shift. So instead of our once a month webinars, uh, we're going to be going to every six weeks. This is so that we can continue to provide you um, good, wholesome content and not trying to scrape stuff together for a once a month um, webinar. Not that we have before, but <laughs> just for in the future, um, we'd like to stay consistent with our good programming. Our next webinar is going to be March 14th. Um, at 1 p.m. Central, that's 2 p.m. Eastern. So go ahead and mark your calendars. We're going to be hearing from Michaela Ray with NWPF, Rachel Ladd from the Iowa DNR, and Eddie Herndon from the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. Um, they're going to be talking about the development of their partnership within these three organizations, survey writing, um, what worked and what didn't, and how they plan to use those survey responses in the future. And I'll throw it back to Sam to talk about the implementation work groups. Thank you, Kristen. So with having the R3 community up and running for two years now, we've seen that growth and expansion from 200 members to literally almost 2,000. And that is an accomplishment for our organization because we've provided the platform for our communication to happen. Kristen just out, outlined a lot of the responses that we're going to make and the adaptations on the community platform to ensure that it remains that vital tool for the R3 community and for those conversations to continue to happen. By adding Kristen and having a full team with Kristen, Cyrus, and I now, we have been able to take on some additional work. And one of those challenging opportunities we have embraced is the National R3 Implementation Work Group. And the purpose of this kind of uh, project and on taking was to look at the implementation of the national plan. Many of our board members did not want us to write a national plan 2.0 just yet. What they wanted instead was us to focus on the implementation of the plan at hand and to ensure that we've accomplished everything that we can from the plan as it stands today. So with those challenging words and uh, the opportunity before us to further implementation, we collected together representatives from the entire R3 community. And this is a list you can see before you. We had about 22 different individuals that we invited to work with us on this implementation work group. And they spanned both state and federal entities. Um, you'll see representation from uh, all regions of uh, the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies, from MOFWA, WAFWA, CIFWA, and NIFWA. You'll see some of our key NGO partners listed as well, including NWPF, Quality Deer Management Association, Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, and uh, USA Archery. 
And finally, we invited many of our industry members to provide their perspectives, including Onyx Maps, American Sport Fishing Association, National Machine Sports Foundation, Archer Trade Association, and Vista Outdoors. And together, these entities and these individuals have signed up to commit hours and time and thought into tackling the important topics to advance implementation of R3 and the national plan. This group got together um, on the first day. It was Halloween in Oklahoma, and we posed a lot of different questions. We said, what is our goal in trying to advance R3? What do we need to address, and what are the things that are holding at implementation of the national plan back? And after many post-it notes and many conversations, hard conversations, we came up with 12 different areas where we focus our efforts. We called these R3 Implementation Priorities, or RIP processes. Um, the name was a little bit funny once we looked back, but we're maintaining it. And through those, which you can see before you, from clearinghouse and data standards and evaluation, from goals and marketing and the mentoring in Orange Army, organizational culture research, standards and best management practices, state and local co partners coordination and roles, as well as the regional, national, and state coordination, and then targeting new audiences and training. All of these are key topics where we're leaning in, answering some hard questions, and identifying the needs and actions associated to those needs to start to tackle. This group has met for at least 40 hours per individual already since the last three months since the group kicked off its efforts. And at the moment, we'll be meeting at the North American for our next in-person meeting to list out all those needs and actions and determine our next steps, our next strategic move, so that we can truly advance the work that we have identified. I think looking forward, based on a lot of the conversations we've had, these are some of the things you can expect from the input packed from this group already. You will see the development of a clearinghouse for the R3 community in 2019. You will see the strengthening and strategic development of regional and national R3 committees. You will see an assessment of national R3 efforts. You'll see an enhanced partnership with angling and boating partners such as RBFF and ASA, American Sport Fishing Association. And you'll also see more communication on R3 and hunting and target shooting participation. Ultimately, you will also hopefully join us for our next um, National R3 Symposium in 2020. We are currently scoping out venues and opportunities to host that next event. So this group has already led way and sought to these opportunities and we'll continue to work with these partners to keep that going forward. So final, just a thank you to each of those people that are on this uh, webinar and for dedicating the time and partnering with the council to get us to where we are today and to their continued dedication through 2019 to help us truly advance implementation on that national plan and R3 as an organization and as a community. And Cyrus, would you like to share a little bit more on how we're going to market those successes and promote the engagement of R3? Sure. Um, thank you, Sam. Um, we worked pretty pretty feverishly last year um, trying to grow not only the council's brand, but the R3 brand nationwide. Um, I think if you look back at the number of articles and, you know, publications like Field and Stream and, and you know, we've... Um, QDMA and Georgia Wildlife Federation just had a good piece in the Wall Street Journal a couple weeks ago that touched on a lot of R3 initiatives. So I think that the um, the word is getting out about R3 um, beyond the circle of people that are on this call today, which is um, obviously an excellent thing. So one thing that council worked on last year is we worked um, hand in hand with um, uh, Northwoods Collective um, to develop a series of videos um, to basically explain to uh, you know the average hunter or the just the average outdoor enthusiast what R3 is, you know what the kind of dire situation of declining participation in outdoor recreation um, can lead mean to or can lead to rather, and um, kind of what the what they can do about it. Um, and so that's a video that Sam posted at the beginning of the uh, webinar at the top. Um, it's on our Facebook page. It's on our YouTube page. Um, it'll be up on our website here, and you know, in a day or two. And, and we hope that that can kind of 
get um, spread throughout the community and, and not to grow our brand so much as to just get the word out about what R3 is and kind of what led us to this point. Um, the other video that we worked on is more of a video that we're going to use to explain who we are when we're working with new organizations, new agencies, new individuals. You know, if we, we want to increase our opportunities um, with industry folks and, and they might not be exactly sure who the council is or what we do. So this is a video that we worked um, pretty, pretty hard on with uh, Northwoods. We actually did some on on site location filming um, to kind of explain who we are, uh, what we do, kind of, you know, the services we can provide and stuff like that. And so we're hoping that that will um, give some clarity if there ever was a situation where people weren't sure of of who we are and what we do kind of in a, in a new situation. Um, so you can expect to see that video as well, probably in the next couple of weeks leading up to the North American. And then, like I said, the, the video that Sam just posted again on YouTube, um, we hope to grow pretty broadly in the next couple of months on social media and other places. And this was the video, but it won't play here. Um, another thing I just want to touch on, and I feel like a broken record after three years and multiple Congresses of, of trying um, the efforts to modernize the Pittman-Robertson Act are still ongoing. Um, essentially, the council worked with, um, well, let me back up. Let me explain for those who are not aware and have never talked to me in the past three years what um, PR modernization will do. It essentially will mirror that of what the uh, sport fish restoration side, the Dingle Johnson Act, will do. Currently, um, those seeking funds and using funds on the Dingle Johnson Act side, the sport fish restoration side, can use those monies for uh, recruitment efforts and public relation efforts, um, which you currently cannot do on the PR side. And so um, right there, you can see what the two main proponents of the, uh, or the main objectives of the legislation will do. Um, and one thing to note, that second bullet is, is something that uh, everyone on this um, webinar should be interested in, is the other part of that legislation that is that it'll take um, an additional $5 million from the archery excise taxes and put it into a special R3 pot um, so people can apply for regional and national programs um, through the multi-state grant um, or multi-state conservation grant, um, excuse me, I'm trying to read, <laughs> through, you can apply for uh, multi-state conservation grants that are R3 specific for regional and national R3 initiatives. Um, so just to look back on what we did last year, we, we worked feverishly in the month of November and December to try to do anything that we could with our partners to get the legislation across the finish line to the president's desk, but um, ultimately, we were unsuccessful, uh, but we made a lot of progress last year, and we're hoping that that progress will translate into kind of a um, an early win this year, and, and we're in the talks of having that bill reintroduced on the House side within days, probably either today or tomorrow, um, by Congressman Austin Scott from Georgia. So uh, once it has been introduced and once things are moving, you can expect to see some more communication from the council and from folks like AFWA and Archer Trade Association and Congressional Sportsman's Foundation about that and um, you know, use use the resources that we have and, and the one pagers and stuff to reach out to your elected officials should you feel so inclined. Uh, I think it's a pretty important piece of legislation, especially in the R3 world. It will uh, make a lot of things a lot easier for state fish and wildlife agencies and I hope we'll uh, maybe breed some innovation with the uh, additional monies going into the multi-state grant pot. And Sam, do you have anything else? I do. So we prepared a lot of the highlights that we as an organization are tackling. Um, what we wanted to do was to allow a forum for conversation too. We try to keep our slides to right about 30 minutes. And um, we've already had some people text in and post some questions to us. 
Um, we understand that there's a lot of conversations and a lot of opportunities before us in 2019. So if there's something on your mind that you want to share or address, we welcome those insights as well. Um, just a few things that have come up just via text or conversation. The, um, the plans that we announced were plans that have been created in the last couple of years. Um, these are newer ones that have followed the national plan. We understand that there are a lot of plans in process and also a lot of plans that have been done in the past. And that's actually why we're going to be conducting the assessment of efforts too, to get a pretty good handle on who's doing what in what states and understand what's going on. So for those states that have had plans or have other plans coming out in the next couple of months, work with us and let us know. Um, by not listing you on a slide, it's not to dismiss any effort at all. It's more so just to help encourage other states to follow lead. Um, another question we received was on the clearinghouse. Um, Jennifer Wisniewski from Tennessee now asked, what do you mean when you say clearinghouse? And Cyrus provided that information. Um, it's a central location to house and highlight R3 programs and documents and successes. And this call is an interesting, the call for a clearinghouse has been something that's been evolving on both sides of the angling and fishing R3 efforts and the hunting and shooting sports R3 efforts. Um, one of our RIP groups in that national implementation work group is specifically addressing what that clearinghouse would look like. Imagine a better way to access successes and research projects and information on progress being made in our R3 community. Um, you can imagine a partner site to the R3 community. They'll stand side by side with the content flowing between each other. Um, and the purpose for this is because we know other people want to know what other states are doing. They want a progress checkup. So we're going to try to tackle that to our best abilities possible to develop that resource so people can access that information quickly and efficiently. So when we say R3 Clearinghouse, that's what we have in mind now. We also look forward to working with the angling and boating partners to ensure that that tool is something that's of use for everyone. And then we also had a, a comment that says, um, I have heard partnering with ASA and RBFF mentioned several times. Furthermore, at the recent R3 and workshop in Tucson, fishing and angling recruitment were m mentioned frequently. In 2019, how much is the R3 community going to be purely about Hunter R3, and or will there be some, some inclusion of fishing and angler R3 efforts? And that comes from Bruce Rich, uh, the R3 coordinator for RMEF. Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. So the gist of the question is, are we going to work, work more on R3 efforts with angling and boating? And that answer is yes. We understand that as a state entity, um, sometimes the division between hunting and shooting, angling and boating R3 efforts is not there. It's just a matter of R3 efforts being done. We recognize that. We've had conversations already, and we look forward to having more conversations with American Sport Fish Association, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, our Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation, all of our partners to understand what else we can do, what other leadership we can put out there to help blend those efforts together and truly ensure that states and our partners have access and are successfully implementing our three efforts. One of the questions we're getting from Kevin Orkman is what is the best way for media organizations like ours, the Professional Outdoor Media Association, to help R3. Cyrus, I think that's a question for you to best answer. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Kevin. And, and um, a few easy things, I think, would be um, to maybe at the uh, the POMA conference this spring in, in Kansas um, to maybe have some type of R3 panel um, or have some some neighboring states who have um, maybe developed plans or have been developing programs that are R3 specific come in and talk about them. The the easiest way um, or the, the best thing that groups like POMA can offer us is more exposure to the average hunter and angler. Um, I think you, you, you look at the, I mentioned it earlier, the, the piece that was in the Wall Street Journal um, last week that um, Hank Forrester and Charles Evans, QDMA and Georgia Wildlife Federation and a few other folks um, were featured in, and, and that's that's getting mainstream coverage of, um, you know, a, a, an R3 effort, the locavore type movement to thousands and thousands and thousands of people, you know, some are non-hunters too. So um, I think just helping us amplify 
the the good successes that this the state state fish and wildlife agencies and our and our partners and NGOs and industry folks are doing um, would be a huge help. And like I said, an easy way would be to have some type of R three panel or R three workshop or something at the the Poma event this this spring. Yeah, what we witnessed at SHOT Show was a definite growth and in interest um, from the outdoor media partners in R3. We've had a lot of people reaching out to cover the topic, and Kevin, we appreciate your interest in reaching out and doing that, so we look forward to working with you on that. We have one more question coming in, it looks like, from either Brandon or um, Doug and crew from Arizona. And we just want to say and take the time to acknowledge our partners again and thank you for helping us to achieve the successes we've had so far. We look forward to continue to work with you and partner with you in 2019. Um, some people are typing here. If not, it's okay. Um, thank you just for the time and effort you've put forward. Just recently in January, a demonstration of that was our partnership with the Archer Trade Association and the National Shooting Sports Foundation with Georgia Wildlife Federation and Quality Dam Management Association. And what we saw was the ability to bring the interest of R3 and the ideas of R3 to our industry partners. We could not have done that without the partnership and collaboration of multiple entities. And thank you to our industry partners for providing that platform just to do such an event and host and build interest and awareness on R3. So you can expect more of that. You can expect progress on the, from the R3 implementation work group the advancements in the R3 community, and just the growth of the marketing efforts that we've presented here today. It's been a great opportunity to share this information with you. If there's no further questions, we can close this down. We'll share our contact information and leave that on the screen, just for your reference if you'd like to reach out to us. Um, just so you know, if you have uh, R3 questions, please those, direct those to myself or Kristen. If you have questions on policy, or marketing and communications or partnerships, please direct those to Cyrus Bears.